What's up everyone? Today we are painting the Deep One from Mansions of Madness Second Edition. What we're working on with this guy is trying to make dual layers of different varying colors to make him look fleshy and gross and horrific all at once. Um, I don't love these sculpts, but I do enjoy painting them. So let's get down to the table and I'll show you how I did them. Alright, so we started by priming him in pure white. Um, I did not use Krylon for him, and uh, the, the pure white from that brand is, is really not good. Use Krylon uh, flat primer, that's the best. We're using an Army Painter War Regiment brush, uh, the, the regiment uh, size brush, and this is Vallejo Model Colors Flat Flesh. So we're going to start by painting in um, the underside of this deep one. So we're going to do his hands, a little bit on his uh, bicep, chest, and um, right in his uh, thigh area there. You also want to make sure that you get around his lips and a little front of his nose if you're going to paint it like I did. Uh, looking at some of the uh, co like concept art, not for the game, but for the deep one in... I wanted to say mythology, but it's not really mythology, just uh, in, in the lore of, of the books. Um, a lot of the concept art kind of has them looking the same, and so I just tried to follow that a little bit. Now I'm painting them in two different colors. There's four models. So I'm uh, using Vallejo Model Colors Flat Green, and I'm also using Vallejo Game Colors uh, Royal Purple. Um, they're not mixed together or anything like that, just one is being painted with the green and one is being painted with the purple. I'm trying to make these as easy as possible like I've talked about before. Uh, it, well, not really before, but earlier in this video. I don't really like these models. They're not great. Um, the game is is amazing. Um, if you've ever played this game, it's it's hard, it is brutal, it punishes you for every decision that you make, but at the same time, it's so much fun. But these models are not the best quality. You can see, um, I, I cleaned them up as much as I could and there's still just like tags hanging off of them everywhere. The detail is super muddy, so. I'm painting them to try to make them as, as good as I can. So here is the finished purple and here is the finished green. Well the first layer I should say. I mean you could stop here if you wanted to but then you didn't need me at all. So now we also have army painter turquoise and model color yellow ochre. The yellow ochre is like a brown yellow, a yellow brown, however you want to call it. And then the turquoise is, well, turquoise. So I'm using the turquoise on the purple model and then using the yellow ochre on the green model and in the same places. So everywhere I'm putting the turquoise on this model, I'm putting the yellow ochre on the other model. It's basically all the fins. So in between his toes, on his back spine, um, here on his hood, I guess you could call it that. Um, so here's what it looks like. Now I only put a single layer on there because I wanted it to look kind of fleshy and gross. Um, I also didn't want to spend a ton of time on this guy. So I did um, multiple layers of the green, multiple layers of the flat flesh, multiple layers of the purple as it were on the other one, but I only did a single layer on the fins. Now this is the burned flesh from the Nocturna line uh, from Vallejo. And this I'm using to just go around the mouth and the inside of the mouth. And you see that it pools a little bit in between the teeth. When it dries, it kind of tones down a little bit. It's not as dark and like vibrant. I think it looks really good, just like that. So I'm using the Citadel's uh, Nuln Oil shade. And this I'm just going to slap it on all over the model. So if you were trying to go for something, uh, say you really like these models. I know that I'm kind of bagging on them a little bit. I apologize, but if you really like these models and you wanted to do them um, in a much better quality, you could use a purple wash um, and, and a blue wash, and then on the other one use green and yellow washes. Uh, you could not wash them at all. You could highlight them up. 
but I wanted them to look just dirty and gross. These are the villains of the game. There's a, a ton of different villains in the game. I already painted the, um, the Alkalites, the cultists. So painting uh, these guys up, they're kind of the cultists of the, of the water areas. When you play the game, sometimes you play inside the mansion, sometimes you play out. So now after I let it dry, it's it, it dried for uh, about 20-30 minutes. I like to really make sure that it's dry before I come back. And I'm using the flat flesh to highlight back up all of the areas that I don't want to be that dirty color. So of course around the mouth, around the neck, but any of the areas that are you know, sunken in the parts that I actually want to be shaded, you, you stay away from those. So right there in the center of the neck, you can see, and then you, you're trying to make him look buff because he's supposed to be scary. So I switch back and forth here between the models so that you can see I'm, I'm doing kind of the same thing on both of them. If you do get some, uh, some of this, um, fairy flesh on the teeth, that's okay. Uh, just go back and, and use a wet brush and clean it up. But that's what I did after, after, um, recording it here but we're putting this on any of the areas that I want to be a little bit brighter so this is the Nocturna fairy flesh I'm highlighting up the flat flesh making it just a little bit brighter and because the detail isn't so pronounced on these minis you just kind of have to guess where you want it the important parts are like on the hand here uh, the top of the chest and I'll show you him um, down there you go. Well, here's the finished purple one. So when he's down on the board, that's what he's going to look like. And you can see those highlights really make him uh, stand out. I think the juxtaposition of the super dark back versus the very light chest, um, it looks really, really good. It's a way that you can make these minis uh, basically compensate for not having a ton of detail is to give them a ton of flash. So now I'm starting with, uh, well, going back to the base color that I started with. So I'm uh, using the royal purple and the flat green and painting back the, the top of the model. So everything that's kind of on the lower sides um, and the insides of the legs and, and arms, those I am not painting. But we want to make sure to get all of the areas that are uh, going to be lighter than the stuff that we want to be shaded. Otherwise, everything's going to look exactly the same, and there would have been no point in even using the null, null oil because everything would be the same color anyway. So by by bringing the top back up to the purple color, we now have made the shaded areas look a little better. So here's Vallejo's model color white, and I've mixed that with the purple and with the green, and now this is where we're going to highlight. So I'm highlighting the tips of the tail, the tips of all of the fins, um, definitely on the head. We're going to spend a little bit of time on the head, making sure that that is uh, brighter than the rest of the back. Then he also has little ridges on his skin that are really hard to see um, on this video. You can see him when, when you're holding him in his hand, and I, and I can kind of point them out. Uh, every time I move the model, you can actually see them a little bit. But when he's standing still, they're really hard to pick out. But there's some on his side, there's some on the top, then there's some veins on his legs, and then there's also like uh, wrinkles around his elbows. So I went and picked out all of those areas right here. I'm painting a vein. You want to make sure that the, the paint is thinned down so that it flows uh, nice and evenly across the model and you're not fighting the paint. But I think this little step uh, really uh, makes the, the model, you know, come to life and gives it a much better overall quality than if you were to just leave it brown and null no, no oiled up. So here's the purple. He's got some purple highlights. Now we have Army Painter's Brain Matter Beige. This is a off-white color. It's... um sort of like an eggshell almost. And I'm using that to paint all of the claws on the front and back feet, or his hands and his feet. Not really sure what to call it. I think in the lore these are human creatures that have been like merged into beast. I'm not sure. 
But if they are human, then this is hands and feet. If they are animal, then I guess that they're just um, all legs and feet or paws, maybe. Uh, who cares? They're just a, a model anyway. But I also did this. Now, this looks way too bright. Looks way too bright. But um, whites don't tend to stay that bright unless you put on multiple coats when you put the clear gloss primers on. So you can see when he's looking at me, it looks like now he has really, really bright white teeth. It fades. Um, you could skip that part if you wanted to, but I, I chose to do it to make his teeth really like kind of stand out and pop. I'm using the Vat Orange from Golden. Uh, this is one of the best ways to use the Golden paints. They are quite expensive but they are super glossy and really, really vibrant. So you can see just a single coat there and his eyes glow orange. And I did it for both uh, colors of models. I just used the orange. Um, orange, yellow, or red would probably look really good with these guys. And then for my last step, I'm putting on some Citadel's Blood for the Blood Gods. This is a technical paint. And I mix it with a little, little bit of black. Um, I feel like by itself, it just looks like fake red blood. When you add that little bit of black in there, and I'm talking like just a, a tip of your brush of black mixed with it, I think that it comes out to actually look like realistic blood. I haven't seen a ton of blood in my life, but, you know, from the movies, it sort of looks like that. So, less is more with this. Don't put it everywhere. You can see here I put it on uh, a little bit on their fangs um, and then some on their claws. So here they are the front and the back. They're glued to the base. Because of the way the base is, I didn't put a, um, I didn't do any scenery on the base. That's how I've done all of the models um, that I've painted so far for Mansions of Madness and that you want to, you know, keep it consistent. But I uh, just glued them onto the base with some super glue. Uh, they've been sprayed with um, Krylon's uh, matte varnish in clear, non-yellowing, which is always important. But if you guys liked the video, uh, I know this was a short one and it's for a model that doesn't have a ton of detail. But I will be back in a couple of days with another model. And I also just bought a new game, so we're going to see some new models from that and I don't want to spoil what it is but if you're interested in seeing anything specific being painted comment down below other than that check me out on Instagram and I will see you guys soon